Hey, I want to thank you for being here. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 210 is with May Lau from Other People's Pockets. Oh, what I love about podcasting is the fact that we can take any subject and we can turn it into an episode. And I just, I love the fact Other People's Pockets. That is such a, I mean, we, we, we do things like that being on terrestrial radio, but it would only be a bit. And what I, that's what I love about your podcast. This is more than a bit. These are stories. Yeah, thank you. I, I, um... I, I do love asking people how much money you do you make, but then also, yeah, it's it's the whole story of how did you get there? What was your relationship with money growing up? You know, what do you still struggle with? How did you get that job? You know, I feel like um, it's it's all about the context of someone's life, whether they've made mistakes or not. It's just so interesting to to hear about that. And I I think everybody for for you know who's been on the show because I know it's not easy to talk about your own finances, but um, yeah, it's been really fun so far. I mean, making mistakes isn't that part of just growing up? And the, I mean, once we break free the twenties, go into our thirties, and we finally start wising up a bit. I mean, that, I mean, I, I learned from those mistakes. Oh, absolutely. But I think that there's a, a brand of podcast out there that's like this, like I'm a success, and like yes. here's how I made it, and. You know, and I, I think that that's fine and it's good to be inspired by that. But I think it's also like not every episode can be like that and not every person. That's not really the reality of of most people's lives. So, yeah, I think hearing about um, m- people who made mistakes or who like do personal finance in a way that, you know, there's people that have overspent in their lives or you know, have done things that are not the sort of standard wisdom, but they steered themselves out of it. And it's just always interesting to hear, like, you know, personal finance is not about like, okay, everybody should all do, you know, these five steps. It's like a very personal thing. If you can, if you can finagle your way through the world, then good for you. But let's hear about how you did it. Well, then you've got people like Carmen Gonzalez as well, who, you know, makes the money. But 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 Carmen is very loving to, to you know, toward the community and, and and really, you know, embraces that. Yeah, I mean, she's a she's an immigrant uh, recent was was undocumented, recently became a citizen, um, making nine hundred dollars a month living with her parents um, in her you know early 20s. But yeah, she really believes in sharing you know when she's putting together her amazon cart on amazon it's like who else needs something who else wants to put something in the cart i'm gonna get it i just got paid like she just really believes that if there's enough for us there's enough for everyone and it's a different way of looking at money because i think in our society you know it's so hard to get by that you start to be selfish you start to feel like well i need to just hold on to what i have because otherwise like i'll never get ahead Um, But I think that everyone's philosophy is different. And I think that she finds a lot of wealth in a different way um, from from spending on her community. I don't do money the way that my parents did money. And I sure don't do money the way that my family does money. But I'll tell you what, though, one of the things that my mother planted was save it for a rainy day. I still believe Mm. in that theory. And do you practice it? I absolutely do. Oh my how God! How do you do yes. it? How do you um, how do you do it and not touch the savings? Well, what I do is is that the multiple jobs that I do have, I don't call them jobs, I call them choices. The multiple choices that I do mm-hmm. have, what I do is I keep it all in separate banks, and and then mm-hmm. it, and they have there's rules that you cannot go over there and touch that money unless it mm-hmm. does this, and and mm-hmm. so and so therefore it's not coming out of one pocket, it's coming out of several. Yeah. Do you do the thing where some people like open an account at a bank that? is like far away that they don't even have an online presence that you'd have to walk you'd have to like cross state lines to go to the bank if you really needed the money you could get it but they make it intentionally so hard for themselves do you do that i have to drive to the bank and and what i did was i don't want to i don't want to get used to the digital hey take a picture of this check and let it go in i don't want to get used to that because that's too easy so therefore i i may i make it a pain in my butt that i have to physically drive to deposit that check yeah I mean, you're so rare. So, so many people don't, can't, don't have this discipline. Like you well, realize I, I'm that afraid you're, of being you're not poor. a common. I'm, I came from a very poor family. I, I don't want to go back to that. Yeah. And has it, and do you have this, this like feeling of stability and, and like, this, does it, um, yeah, it, it sounds like it's paid off for you, like doing this and you've, you've reached a level of stability doing this. Uh, comfort. 
I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, because, I mean, because I mean, in, yeah. with this banking world that we live in today, which is just freaking the heck out of me right now, uh, yeah. you know, and it's just, I know. What are you going to do? <laughs> I don't with your know. Money now? <laughs> it's out of my yeah. hands, man. It's, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but but how do you get into the mindset of someone when you start talking about money? Because it is an emotional thing for a lot of people. Because you're talking about dreams. You're talking about something that keeps them connected to their own little worlds. Yeah. And I think that we, you know, obviously we screen people before coming on the show that, you know, do you want to come on and talk about your, your own personal finances? But um, yeah, I think that um, I, I, I try to make it clear that I am really curious. So this is not a judgmental space. Um, I think that there's too much judgment that goes on when you hear about somebody's money. Um, but yeah, it, it is it is a weird thing. I think that people, especially if they share their net worth, I mean, that feels um, like the price tag on their head. It feels like it's all reduced to that. It's all just, you know, am I a success or not? And people are going to judge based on that number. Um, But I think that, you know, people tend to open up a lot when you ask about their money upbringing. Um, Everyone has kind of an interesting story about their childhood and, and what was or wasn't talked about, because even if money wasn't talked about in your home, you still learned something about money as a child. Yeah, you know, children totally. learn everything. So I think that just, um, yeah, trying to be curious about their lives. But it is, it is hard. And there are times when people shut down on certain questions that I ask and open up on others. And it's always interesting to see, you know, where people's comfort levels are. Yeah, it, to me, it's it's almost money is like the, so, the social media in the, in the way that it's like we all put up fake pictures and fake smiles and things, yeah. and and we're all judged by that. And I think that money's the same way. We'll show it off. We'll go out and get a brand new car. We'll get a new roof for our house. Oh, they must have money. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, some people who who have a lot of money specifically don't do those things. Yeah. You know, they they just they, that maybe that's why they have money is that they don't go out and buy the new car. But yeah, it is you know. I'm all for salary transparency. And at the same time, I realize that sometimes it's TMI. Like sometimes it's like, I didn't need to see all my coworkers in their bathing suit today. I just did, you know, like it's just, (laughs) sometimes it's a little, it's a little much and you have to kind of be prepared for the information. It's, um, it's in a certain context, but yeah, I think that we all walk around with a mask on and to some extent that protects us and, and, allows us to be social people because I guess there's a reason why humans like wear clothing and and do certain things to to not be totally exposed but um it is you know I think that also like too much silence around it too much um just not talking about it is what leads to people being underpaid and Mm -hmm. um you know the silence tends to tends to favor the employers who don't want their employees to organize and talk amongst themselves You know, that is so true because, I mean, it's like, you know, coworkers want to discuss, you know, how much money are you making? You know, we're not we're not going there. We're just not going there because you don't need to know. And I don't need to know because I guarantee you it's going to it's going to create a division here. Yeah. And I think that that is that mindset. I think that that can be true. And I also think it can be it's changing, especially among younger people. There's an an understanding of like. I'm probably going to have some hurt feelings when mm-hmm. I find out the truth, but I do need to know because, um, you know, as I go into asking for a raise or negotiating a contract with my next employer, you know, knowledge is power. And um, especially for, you know, I was, uh, you know, you're, we're in the same field of, of journalism and media. Um, you know, you'd be surprised at how many people can report the hell out of a, a story that they put in the paper or on the radio, but when it comes to finding out the information, reporting out salaries in their own lives, they don't do it. They don't want to do it. It's like, have you, how many people have you asked, you know, do you know that the real numbers of the people in your industry or at your level, what they're being paid and they don't know. And they don't, they, you know, it's awkward. Um, But it's just like anything else, like in order to do a good story, you got to get sources, (laughs) you got to, you got to get the data points. So I think it's important as people try to get raises and stuff like that to not just go on glassdoor.com, but to actually ask real human people about how much they make. Um, 
if they can and you know and and try to to use that information to feel more confident in asking for a raise well look at how sports has changed because everybody I, i've talked with more people that don't even watch it anymore because of how much money these these sports heroes mm. really are making and and i right. think that that that's such a turnoff when people find out that oh my god you're, you're you are making a lot of money yeah i don't want to hang yeah. with you yeah, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of judgments and and you know it's it's again it's it's understandable and at the same time like I you know I try to in my life I'm not always great at this but like whenever I feel um, ne- kind of negative or scared of something to like okay how can I turn this judgment into curiosity it's it's just like when you're little and you're really scared of spiders and your teachers like you should read a book on spiders. Like you should try to learn about them. And once you do, you'll find like, huh, interesting. I didn't know spiders did this, you know, Um, it kind of breaks away some of the fear. And so I think that um, I I really do think that it's something like sex where, you know, I don't know, 50 years ago, there's certain things you just don't talk about even with your own partner. Um, But there's more of an understanding of like, you know, we need to talk about these things. Um, It's, it's not so weird. And, it's just information and um, you know the more we get comfortable with having that conversation the more we can maybe uh, just know how to handle that when we when we find out but that's interesting I didn't know that anyone was not watching sports purely because of their income I, I hadn't really heard I, I believe it I just I hadn't really heard that before yeah but their follow-up answer and I, I'll go so where do you get your sports fix then well I watch <laughs> professional wrestling oh my god you've traded the <laughs> NFL for professional wrestling thanks dude but you know you brought up an interesting point about sex and money now we have to talk about Mistress Marley there's a connection yes. for you yep I mean the intersection of sex and money is, is <laughs> always in- yeah so she is somebody um i interviewed she mistress marley is a financial dominatrix um and what that is is she is also a normal dominatrix so what you would think of with whipping and dungeons and stuff but part of her practice is that she is online and she posts pictures of herself she's very sexy um and she kind of berates people online and then tells them to send her money and like that's it there's no sex there's no sexual contact Mm -hmm. um occasionally she will put a collar on someone and take them to the atm and they'll take out money for her and then that's it (laughs) um so she makes re- pretty good money doing this. And um, it's a really interesting look inside, um, you know, our psychology or at least the psychology of her clients who tend to be men, tend to be CEOs or people in power that, you know, they're bossing people around all day. And at the end of their day, they kind of want to be bossed around. They kind of want to not have to make the decisions. And it's kind of their kink to lose power through losing money in their wallet um and you know like different strokes for different folks i but yeah she makes good money off of this and loves it and feels like she also has an actual connection to her clients that they they truly thank her for this service um it's it's all very fascinating don't you think money is an addiction just like drugs and alcohol I think it can be. Yeah. I think, I think it can be. Uh, I think any, you know, I, I was hearing someone uh, the other day saying, you know, we're all on the addiction spectrum. Like, you know, it's not like, oh, there's some addicts out there and then everyone else is fine. I think that um, you tend to be the more money you have, the more space it occupies in your brain. And sometimes you can become obsessed with it. Um, You know, the more you have, the more you, are aware of other people that have even more because you're now you're in circles where you're going to parties where people are talking about their vacations or whatever. Um, I think that, I think there are some people who aren't addicted, um, but they're probably rare. And I I just think that our society, you know, like you, you have to make so much money just to get ahead in our society by and large. And so it kind of forces you to fixate on this thing that, um, maybe in another universe, you know, we didn't have to be so addicted, but, um, you know, just to get ahead, you know, you feel like you have to really double down. Well, I'll, I'll, one one group of people I still want to study in a big way, cryptocurrency people, because, I mean, is, mm. is this fad finally over or is it just going through a stumbling right now? I think it's just going through a stumbling. I mean, I think that um, I think that there are still these diehard crypto people that believe that. 
Um, you know, it's about kind of the, the underlying technology and blockchain and um, yeah, I think it, it's so it, it's so interesting because even as of I don't know a year ago, like I feel like crypto was seen as like maybe we should all get into crypto you know like yeah, kind of cool yeah, and like yeah. you should le- you should learn about it and now it's like oh god these scam artists but i i think that um i don't know i think i think i think it's going to rear its head again I- and i don't know ultimately is it is it for real is it going to be successful but um i do think we're going to keep hearing a lot more about it well I, we're probably going to hear a lot more about these ais too because i think they're trying to figure oh, us yeah. out when it comes to buying i mean you, you we, we, we could be talking about something right now and five seconds from now it's going to come up on my on my facebook and it's going to say you can buy this right now oh my god i've got to have it yeah Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole world of AI is is so crazy. I mean, the thing is, we've had AI in our world before. It's not like only now has it appeared, um, but now it's just more sophisticated. And and it is, you know, like it it's crazy. Um, I was just talking to somebody who works in AI and they were like, oh, don't worry about all the, you know, the worst case scenarios with what could happen. Like, ultimately, there's still human beings that control the technology. And it's like. Yeah, but isn't like <laughs> like isn't the fear that like the the technology will become smarter than us or or it's like uh, I don't know I, I just think that um, you know it's it's a fascinating area and it frankly like on the sort of investment side or on the the Wall Street side you know the AI is seen as something absolutely to invest in so then it's just going to get more money going to get better I don't know what to say about all that but it does freak me out a bit. Well, and your podcast is a great investment, too, because it almost you, you make us feel like that we're kind of vicariously tuning into somebody else's life or we're kind of just, you know, listening. And, and it, you just make us a part of the community with the subjects that you bring up. And I'm just so proud of you for doing something like this. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I, I really appreciate that. Well, please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Great. Thanks. What do you what do you want to like? What do you have? Um, are there topics that you like yeah, I, I think I think that uh, what I, 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 the topic I would love for you to do. Everybody is in this roundup mode. I want to know with with the roundup mm. that they're doing at these grocery stores. You know, it's going to community. You know, uh, companies and and things. I want to know: Can we use that as a tax write off? I'm waiting for a show like that. That that if we really did our homework, and if I if I went up ninety cents today, can I use mm. that? At, you know, because eventually by the end of the year, it's gonna it's gonna add up. I want to use that as right. a tax write off. But who's keeping track? So, like, at the store, they're keeping track, but they're not yeah. giving you a statement No, at the end of the year. No. Like, they're just taking the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ike, you want to round up? No. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's just something for you to dig into. <laughs> yeah. It is interesting. Well, you, um, you be brilliant today, okay? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.